It's mailbag time. I've got two boxes here. That's right, just two. Reason being, this one has got loads of stuff in it. Thanks to my supporters. If you want to donate to me through my Patreon or through the memberships on YouTube. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> Interesting. What am I opening up here? Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, interesting, definitely right. UA714HC op amps. Hopefully these are okay. Date codes are all different, so I think these are all used parts. I don't they could be new old stock, but yeah. Yeah, those legs have been cut, so that's not new. That's definitely been in a device before. See so these used parts. Hopefully good used parts. I mean you don't really know, do you? I'm gonna have to set up some kind of test jig for these and actually testing them to see if they actually work okay or not. Hmm. I mean op amps couldn't be that hard. Right, so I've set up a little test jig. So I'm gonna try these op amps out one by one, just go through and make sure they look okay. Thought it might be interesting. So I haven't powered this up yet, I've got it set up, but I thought I'll do this on camera in case it goes bang or something. I've got a variable pot here which I can use to test the voltage going into the input. I've got this set up for a 10 times gain, so the visitor network on a negative feedback should be giving 10 times gain in theory. I've got a couple of fine leads here for power, which I'll hook up to. I'm running 15 volts on power supply at 30 milliamps, so I've got it quite restricted. I don't want it to potentially kill something. And I've got my multimeter set up here for volts directly on the output of the op amp. So I should be able to see what the output is from the op amp based upon this. So we should be able to see whether it's got gain or not. Although actually we can't see the input voltage. We need that too. One moment. Okay, so first device is installed. Let's give it a try. Can't limit 30 milliamps, I might drop it down a bit more actually. Let's do 20 milliamps. Right, turn the power on. We've got a 4.8 volt offset. That's the output offset. This is the input voltage. So I should be doing like a 10 times 10 gain, so half a volt, 0.6 is a 6 volt output. 0.9 is 10.5 volts, or 1 volt in the input. Getting 11 volts out. Okay, just trying to get some reference points about what these devices should be doing. But that one's looking reasonable, 1 milliamp current draw. 5 volt offset in the bottom end, not sure about that. The maximum it goes up to is 14.2. So that's 0.8 at the top end and 5 volts at the bottom end. Hmm. Okay, device number 2. 4.1 volt offset, a bit lower, bring this up a little bit. That's doing about the same kind of thing. So about 1 volt there. Yep, 11 volt out, maximum is 14.3. The offset's about 4.1, maybe it is alright. Next device. Car's looking good, 4.5 offset. Bring it up. Yep, so 1 volt input is. I could use a PDB, it's too many for this. Hmm. 11.2 output. So, yep, that's looking the same. Right, next device is in. Car's looking good. 11 volts out, 1 volt. Drop it down, 4.4. Next device, current's looking good, 4.6 volt offset, bring it up, about 1 volt, come on, yeah close enough, that's looking fine, top end, probably the same like the others here, next device, oh this has got high current on this one, yeah this one's bad, ok, got a bad one, yep, yeah, absolutely positive about that, I'll check to the connections again, one you put up, there's absolutely nothing on the output, and it's drawing 10 milliamps. So, yep, this one's definitely bad. Next device 4.7 volt offset. It's looking okay, 14.3 at the top end, and we're getting about 11 or so. Yep, that's fine. And the last device, comes looking good, output voltage looks good there, 1 volt, wind it right up. Yep. And want it right down. Yep. So, okay, I think they're all alright, apart from that one. I think they only have one bad one. And back to one which we measured bad before. Let's check it again. Yep, still bad. So, it's fried. But that's not bad. Seven out of eight were good. Excellent. So, the only thing I'm not really sure about with these op amps is that lower offset, like the output voltage offset, that 4.2 to 4.5 volt offset that's on the output there. I'm not sure that's right. I think that's a bit big. I was looking at the data sheet trying to determine exactly what it is, and 
biggest examples it gives is that it's basically got a 2.5 volt offset based on its input voltage. You know, it gives an example of 15 volt plus or minus 15 volt rails, and it shows a different voltage offset of only 2.5 volts. So maybe I should do a plus or minus 15 volt rail, which is in chugging 30 volts, and we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I don't know, it just seems a bit odd. I'll increase the upper voltage, I'll risk sacrificing one. I'll increase the upper voltage to 30 volts, so I'll treat it effectively as a plus or minus 15 volt rail. We'll see what that does for the voltage swing then. Right, we've installed device number one, which is the very first one I tested. Everything's exactly the same path and voltage. Let's turn these back on so we can see what's going on. Turn this right down. Right, double check connections. Okay, I think we're good. Let's do it. Now getting four milliamps draw instead. It's looking kind of right. Top end oh yeah, is 29.2, so it's 0.8 volts down still. Go to the bottom end, still 5 volts high. So it's still a 5 volt offset at the bottom end. Which is twice as much as I expected it to be. Hmm, that's curious. But this other stuff still looks right. And now we're on this package. Now, I'd normally say there's links down below for stuff, but in this case there won't be. Come on, let me in. I want my parts. There's a lot of stuff in here. Some of the stuff. There's some more. Okay, what we've got in here? A rather large collection of parts. You think I'll carry it away again? It's entirely possible to carry it away. cost me a small fortune too. So why I've got all these is quite simple. I was working on my Datron calibrator and I was working through it thinking I don't know what is wrong at the time. It's all fixed now. I was going through these various parts thinking well, I'd love to substitute that part. I don't have one. I'd like to substitute that part. Oh, I don't have one. So I was thinking well, okay I went through the circuit diagram and stuff like that and just, just randomly got to parts thinking right I haven't got any of those. Let's get some of them. And so I basically stocked up on loads of parts, which I don't have, which are using the Datron Calibrator. I'm just future-proofing really, so one day it could entirely fail. And at least then I'll have a good chance that I've got the right parts for it, because I've got all of the parts. Well, most of them anyway. Some of these parts are brand new, like new old stock. Some are used parts. You know, it's a bit of a gamble. But we'll see what we can actually come up with here. So... Some of these parts are fairly common parts, or just a bit hard to get anymore, but... So this is an MC14050B CP. Here we have a MC14068B CP. A DM7401N. UA714HC, oh cool, I want to test these. I think U means used, I have to check, but I've got my test jig over here now so we can plug them in and test them. So I'll put that to one side. MC1407 OBCP. MC1401 BCP. ICM7555 CN. Eight pin devices. LF411CH, some more op amps. I may or may not test those. I mean, it's got a U there for use. I'm not sure if my test jig will work on those as well. I'll have to have a look. I'll check those out. Uh, LM212H, more op amps as well. So, do the same deal. It's got a U for use, I think. UA101HM, all these op amps, which I think, well, it's got an N on it. And check the legs out. Yeah, that's new, it's never been used, so that's probably fine. I'm going to test that one. This is a U1897. Yep, that's what it is. A MC14025 BCP. LTC1052CN. These are the 8 pin devices. 
as used in a few things actually, as part, I think used in the Solotron as well. MC14504 BCP. Uh, U404. It's tiny little, it's so like a jewel J fit or something. Special device. Kind of sitting there, really small. It's a jewel one. They're matched. So these are really rare. So I've got a couple of them. <laughs> I think those are quite expensive. So I only got a couple of them. Yeah, I've got five of those. I figured that'd be enough. J112 is uh, some J frets. Yeah, they're 412CN. Eight pin devices. 74LS02N. UA78MGU1C. This is a special 5 volt regulator. It's 15 volt actually. These are used in the multimeters as well. This is on my cart from previous purchases and I just left them on there. I thought, ah, yeah, I might as well get them anyway. So these are actually in the multimeters the, like, the 1082s and 1062s, 1081s, 1061s, 1065s. One of the regulators, a 79 is a 78. That's a 78. ICM 7555 IPAS. MC14013 BCP, there's a fairly common part, I think. It's like 4013s. You anyway, know, I've got those. I've got some 4000 series ones already, but I thought I'd get ones which are actually in the unit, so exactly the same. BF393, yeah, BF393. LTC1052C in. These are the different devices. These ones have got uh, 16 pins instead of 8. NE5534, a couple of those. You can actually get these new as well, so I bought some new ones recently. I've got loads of them, I think. Probably too many. MC14076BCP. There's a UA101HM. They look new. As in, well, new old stock. They've got slightly corroded legs on them, that sort of stuff. UA741HC, which is a bit like 714, but it's a 741. It's the opposite way around. A bit more common. I've got a bunch of these already. I've got some as well. I think those might have been in my previous cart, so I'll just lift them on there. I shall check those as well. I'm not sure if they're new or not. J174, it's a J FET or something, or some kind of FET. Another J174. Actually, I might stick with those together. There's a MM74C932N. Not sure what that was. A couple of eight pin devices. MC14569BCP. MC14538BCP. LM319N. These are more common ones. I've already got some anyway, I think. I'm not sure. The MC14094 BCP. LM2903N. 8 pin devices. Loads of data sheets to look for, isn't there? Loads of them. MC14028 BCP. MM74C14N. It's a bit more common, I think. I've seen these in other things as well. Or at least a variation of them. Uh, MC14503 BCP. These are some HCPL2601N. These are auto couplers. So these are used in the Datron gear. I think also in the Solartron as well. TC4174 BP seven four LS twenty seven seven four LS three ninety the sixteen pin devices SN seven four LS seventy six N MC1474 BCP, 
14 pin looks like. Like I said, I went a bit overboard with all these parts. I just wanted to make sure I had everything I could possibly need. And, you know, forever. MC14021 BCP. Did I 14 pins as well? I'll probably get this pin counts wrong. I'm, I'm just estimating, I'm not actually counting pins. MC14049 GBCP. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure it matters. Took a data sheet, totally. MC14071 BCP. Those are 14 pins. ULN 2002A. I actually purchased some of these brand new recently. So I've got a bunch of these as well. HEF 4066BP. Now the 4066 is a quad bilateral switch. Remember that one? This number stuck in my head for some reason. Okay, what's got here? Oh, these are big. <laughs> MTM 2P50. There could be output transistors from the Natron. I am not sure. LM394H. It's in there somewhere. There you go. Couple of circular ones. I don't know if they're used or new. I might check those. What's this one? CA3140E. 280 pin devices. I'm talking about those are now. 3140, that sounds familiar. I just can't think what it is. UA101A HMQB. They are all looking new. MC14081 BCP. Seven four LS04. J108 sees so a JFET which I used in the Detron. Obviously, well, all these parts are used in Detron, but J108s, those are harder to get. Some J175s, also hard to get. Uh, MC14041 BCP. Some Detron ones are also hard to get. UA79MGU1C, these are the negative regulators. I said to show the positive ones before, these are negative ones. And some J108s again. So, that's good. Uh, oh, one missed one. What's this one? MC14046 BCP. So I'm going to staple these together so I don't lose the sets. And I'll look at these ones, see if they're worth testing. So I've got my test jig set up again. Let's uh, get one of these parts out which just arrived and see how it tests. So this is the same as the previous parts which I showed, which are used parts. These are the UA7. One fours. These are a different brand. I just need to orientate these legs to make them a basically a, uh, a dip style. So I'm going to get them to the breadboard. I think these are used parts which have had the legs extended. I can see a step in these legs. Let me show you. Can you see those little lines just there? One there, there, there. A little step in that leg just there. So I think these are salvaged parts which have been refurbished. So who knows what they are, maybe they're not the real parts. Maybe we'll test them all. First part is in the breadboard. Let's turn this on. I'm going to use the initial testing as I did before. 15 volts, 20 milliamps, current limiting. Let's turn this down to start with, make sure it's all right down. 4.6 volt offset, so it's very much like the original parts we had before. With the other parts we tested. We'll bring this up. Do 1 volt. There, and we'll see if we're getting about 11 volts on the output. Don't forget, this is based on the resistors I've got on this board, so it's obviously not perfect. So that's looking good, and top end, 14.2. So it looks exactly the same as the other parts. That's promising. Point number two. 4.6 volt offset. One volt's doing about 11 volts, so that's looking good. Part two is looking good. So I've tested all these op amps, and they all seem fine. These uh, UA714s, they seem fine. No problems with them. I believe the U does mean U, so I think they actually are sold as used parts. They've also been refurbished to make them like new. But I think that's what the U means as used parts. I mean, that's fine. As long as they're declared as being used parts, I don't care. So the uh, UA741 has the same pinout as the one we just did. So we'll hook this up, test it out. 
only two of them in here, so we'll test them both. These also look like they've been recovered. It does say you on there, so I'm guessing that does mean used, like I said before. It's sort of good they actually do that, you know, in a way you can make a part look almost like new. thing is, I know these aren't original, like brand new parts, because they're just too good. <laughs> you know, you get old parts which are new old stock, they're not perfect. And these look perfect, which makes me think, yeah, they're not new. Power up. One volt going in, 14 volts coming out. Hmm. Nothing coming in, 14 volts coming out. That's concerning. Let's check the next part. Exactly the same. Maybe I've done the pin out right after all. Hmm. So those parts I'm a bit suspicious about, seeing as I can't actually get them to work. But there's no high current drawing or anything like that. It's just like... I don't know if they're bad or if I've just got the wrong pin outs for these devices. I'm not sure. I will have to look into that some more. But that's one side for now. So the next thing to test is the LM212H. These are supposed to be the same pin out again. So we'll see. These are also marked as a U and I believe these are salvaged parts. I don't mind salvaged parts as long as they're actually tested and proved to be working. <laughs> Anyway, I don't have much luck today with the looks of it. Should be the same pin out, Let's see what we get. 14 volts output as well. Hmm. So we're going to test it up. So, both of those did the same thing, so I don't know. It's weird, I re rechecked my setup against one of the other parts I already checked and it's working fine. So it's not my setup which is an issue. I need to look into these ones some more, maybe they're fake. Right, so I'm testing the LF411s, same test. 14 volts as well. The pinout's definitely right. I've double checked all that. This don't work. I think these might be a bunch of fake parts. These are either been lasered. Let's check another part. Same deal, doesn't work. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm guessing these are probably fake parts. That's disappointing. So the next thing to look at is the LM394H. Now these are actually a dual transistor, it's a special match transistor pair. So I'm going to stick this in the breadboard and just probe the pins and see what we get from that. But um, this has got six pins, not eight. And diode test function. We have a diode junction. And another one. That's actually looking promising. And the other way around. Okay. This way around. Hey, this might actually be real. That'd be nice. Yep, sweet. That appears to match at least a dual transistor setup. Well, that's what those parts sorted out. They seem to be basically okay, apart from ones I'm not sure about, which I've put to one side. I'm going to check those later on a bit more thoroughly. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, click the bell icon to get notifications about new videos, all that sort of stuff. Have a check down below in those comments. If you've got a better way of testing these op amps to check for them being true, rather than the way I just did it, please tell me down below or point me to an example or something, because I don't have an understanding of how op amps work. So I just put that circuit on there to amplify by 10 roughly the input voltage to the output. So it should be amplifying by 10. So it should have really just been working. I mean, I believe all the pinouts are correct, so why those other ones didn't work, I'm only guessing they're fake parts, but they all worked in exactly the same way. I've also since done some diode testing on those parts. I actually just shift for diode junctions across all the legs, and they seem like all the legs are populated, so don't know how fake they really are. I, I don't know, maybe just bad ones. Could just be really unlucky. But anyway, tell me down below in the comments if you've got any better ideas of how we can test those, see if they're real parts or not. I don't want to find out they're fake by putting them into a test instrument, which I'm trying to repair and making the situation worse. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, catch you later.